and I have actual hot tea and not three hour oh. old cold coffee or water or anything. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Hello, Graham. Oh, Faith. Good to see you again, my darling. God bless. And yeah. welcome back, everyone, to Tea at Three. I'm Faith Schmidt, and this is Graham Care. So, Graham, I saw you wearing that tie last week, and I completely forgot to ask about it. Tell me. Oh! <laughs> Tell me about your nice. tie. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so seldom that young people ever ask old men about their ties. So <laughs> <laughs> It looks I'm like this, little this beads. Is a, <laughs> this is a mason bee. Ah. Um, and I, I, I believe that your, your parents have mason bees. They do, right? yeah. So, so you're familiar with what they do, but maybe somebody who's watching at the moment is unfamiliar. And I won't go on for half an hour about mason <laughs> bees, but they're different from honeybees. They don't produce honey. All they do is pollinate everything in sight. They don't fly very far away from their, their hole that they have. They nest in holes and they take the pollen back, make a big heap of it for the eggs, which they then lay in the pollen. And then they germinate and, well, whatever they do. And, and then they eat the pollen and then fly off. And so it's generation after generation of, of being, being a busy bee um, <laughs> and collecting pollen from everything, which is very good. Everything bears more fruit because of them. So that's what I'd like to be. I'd like to be a busy bee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my parents have a lot of fruit trees. And so they got them... I want to say like five, six years ago, maybe longer ago than uh -huh. that. And they've just been yes. like hibernating during the winter and then they come back out in the spring. And I think sometimes they get more, but ever since they got them, there's like twice the amount of fruit on all the trees. It's crazy. It, it, it's, it's marvelous, you know? And when you think of our lives are supposed to bear fruit and what, when, what, what, there you go. That, <laughs> that's why I wear the time. <laughs> so I um, have really been, um, following in the footsteps of, of my uh, stereotypical demographic here. And I recently acquired houseplants. And so that's what I've been thinking about, but through this background, but there's a, there's a fun surprise in it. And I've been like staying really still, so you can't see it yet, but are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> there's a little bit of joy in the middle of the houseplants. <laughs> oh, that that is too. <laughs> so last week, uh, you brought up the idea of being more of a like a tighter knit sieve or a filter from all of the information that's being thrown at us, and not like accidentally spreading unnecessary ne unnecessary negative information onward yep. to people in order to be more of a positive influence, so that we can spread good and keep information moving but not information that will be harmful or negative to those around us yeah. um, that's what we've been trying to do this week um i will say one of the big things for me with this is that i don't think this is only a generational thing but it is probably a big part of it is that i receive that information very differently from you i think i think you were talking about more specifically like news I guess it's it's hard to describe uh, the, what the word news means to me because I'm not like going on like newspaper websites or like watching any sort of cable TV or something like that. For me, it comes through more so like filtering through social media and through my friends or like through yeah. like the first little square on Google, like when I go to search something. Mm -hmm. And so it's definitely like already filtered a little bit down through the community that I've built for myself through like social media and things like that for, for better, for worse, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, uh, so I think that not a lot of negativity makes its way to me, or maybe I just have like a deep built in resistance to it. Yes. Um, yeah. I am like, I am a, very deep down like strong hardcore people pleaser <laughs> and like conflict mediator so I think that the instinct to 
parse negative inf information down to either uh, helpful information or fact is kind of already there with that desperate need okay. to make everyone around yep. me happy and not spread a uh, falsity or things like that. But I do also think that it's very, very difficult to notice when I'm doing that because it's something that's so natural. Like you see something interesting or off or negative in a little bit of a way yeah. and you want to share it with someone to be like, well, what is this thing? Like, tell, like, what is this? And, and maybe through that you can discover the truth of the matter, but also maybe through that, if it's not like an in-depth enough discussion, you're just passing on this fact that maybe isn't even true and maybe is negative. And then maybe someone will be like, I feel like I heard somewhere that this happened. And then yeah. that it just goes on and yeah. on down the line. So, yes. Do you know, um, I think you're right. And uh, you see, I haven't had television for over 30 years. So I'm, I'm certainly not a news watcher, but I do have an iPad. And I did when you and I started this program, I never had YouTube on my, uh, as an app um, on, my, on my machine. But because we were doing this, I got YouTube. And then I am in, in, in stabbing my way through the mountain of stuff and to find ourselves, I ran across these other people, one of whom was a late night comedian type newscaster who was hugely amusing to me because he was right up my street in my political bias, if you will. Mm. And he was saying really nasty things in a funny way. Um, and I got hooked for a little while of going to him to see what he was going to come up with next. Um, and in the end, I got to realize that this was having a negative effect upon me. It, I was laughing and I was pleased. I liked the guy's performance very much, but I didn't like what it was doing to my mind. When you and I started this together, you know, we had this idea that you could lift the top of your mind off and there would be like a forest pool and it was raining. And eventually the, the level, of the liquid level in our mind, if you will, of ideas rises to the place when it starts to overflow into the actions that one has from day to day. And I think if you watch enough negative stuff, you start to be negative in the way you live. And I don't want to live like that. I really don't. Um, so uh, this last week, I, I've been practicing this to see whether it's workable. Because, you know, I love what you and I do. We, we knee-jerk a reaction to something, and then we have to live with that knee-jerk for a week to find out whether it's real or not. Mm -hmm. It's not whether it's the truth or not. It's whether it's practical reality for us. Um, so I've been listening uh, occasionally to things because yeah, headline, headlines are like bait to a deep water fish for me. They're just pieces of bleeding morsels which are thrown <laughs> into the water and I'm after them like, like a rocket. So I do have a, a look at this and I have found six items this week. I started to list them. Um, that I really was so passionately put off by them that I wanted to communicate that to somebody. I don't have a wife anymore to be able to, to shout at, you know, about, with my, with my, Damn, darling, do you see that guy? You know, I don't have anybody anymore. So I do have some friends that I can say that to, and I think that I think that they feel the way I feel, and. Therefore, it doesn't do any harm. Oh, but it does. The moment that I take any of my time and hold on to something which is a, a potentially bad report about something and pass it on to another human being, I'm sorry. I don't want to be in that kind of a river of information. So I'll tell you what I did in each one of these six cases. 
I went online and three of those, I went on for the first time to factcheck.org. I, ha, have you ever been on fact check? No. no. Well, if you go fact, fact check, you know, dot org, that's it. And they have a list there of the commonly misquoted or misinformation or plain lies that are going on at the present moment. And I found three of my six were plain lies. Mm. They, they didn't ever, they, didn't, they don't have anything else except a plausible, apparent source. But they don't exist. They're not true. So I go to that and I'm wondering, so which nation of the world is feeding that piece of information in that I got quoted to me and that I actually bit on and was and was was emotionally upset by we are know at the present moment that there are nations of the world that are doing their best to begin already to to upset us in the united states about things that we do to each other but we're not doing them 50 percent of the things that upset me are not being done here they're a lie they're introduced into our culture through the social media, basically, and picked up by the public media. And um, so I, I, all of this is leading me to the conclusion is that I want the truth. And I don't know where to go to get it anymore mm -hmm. for any certainty. So all I can do, if you forgive me, I'll just do one quick metaphor with you and, and, then, and, and then get out of your way. Um, I just see this as a wrecking ball being flung across the public media with the idea of getting the other person knocked off their pedestal. Mm. It's, it's a personality context. So they push that. Let, let's talk about the, the political football itself. It's a wrecking ball. And as it swoops across to knock the other person off, we, the public, have to duck. Otherwise, we're going to get hit by it and hurt by it. And um, if there's one other thing we can do is catch it, to stand in the way of one of these projectiles and catch it and, and put it to the test of seeing whether it's a plumb line, whether they may measure things uh, up, straight up and down by a plumb line. So if the wrecking ball can be stopped long enough to become a plumb line, then I can check on whether it's true by going to fact check. And then it's off my mind. I've dealt with it. If it's mm -hmm. untrue, then it's another nation trying to fiddle with us. Well, I don't. I have to say something here about that. I think that I think that that there are people out there that want us. <laughs> I don't. Uh, I don't know how to say this completely. I will. I'm not going to assume that misinformation comes from outside of our own country. <laughs> I think that's I, a dangerous, I, I'm not saying that I think that's a dangerous belief. Some of it. Yeah. I think I it's a hundred percent possible. I am yeah. not that is not my default belief. I think that okay. there are people in our own country as much as anywhere else that that want us to believe certain things. I don't think yes. I I think Oh, I, think, I agree with you there. Yeah. I think it's a misrepresentation to to associate that with always being from another nation. Okay. And always, I agree with you. And as I tried to say, three of my six, I can't find a source for. Mm. Um, the other three, there was a source and it turned out to be mis misinformation because they were lying. Uh, and that's what I think that you're saying. We have a lot of people who for various practical reasons on their side and biases want to overflate what is actually happening by telling a lie. Uh, and it's more attractive and is more likely to get passed on. We have such an admirable system, you know, this has been going on for over 200 years. It's extraordinary. It's, it's a world beating, amazing thing that, we, that we're living in the midst of. Should be protected at all costs. And we are still able to do that. You and I are talking freely over the air. It's a marvelous thing. 
we can vote as we want to. Nobody's rigging it. And we, we, it is everybody scrutinizing everybody else. I mean, it's uncomfortable, but it's amazing and wonderful. And we should be grateful for that. So have you been thinking about what we, what we ponder next week? Because I'm, I'm off the bad news now. I'm just... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so along the line of... Um, if we're filtering out uh, negativity and trying more so to only let through positivity, what we're saying in that is we are trying to spread positivity. And what we talked about uh, last week about choosing an attitude of joy and positivity and then yep. um, connected that through like, make sure you filter out the negativity um, what I would like to think more about is um, because of how difficult the decision is to just snap on and be happy, <laughs> like <laughs> thinking of, I think you did this a lot in our conversation when we were talking about joy, but thinking of the little kernels of things that when you're so overwhelmed, like what I used to do at my other house, which I still do now. I, I still have a window by my desk, but I would just stare out the window and look at those bright pink flowers and be like, oh yeah, there's this color and life in the world. And I can kind of take a breath and mm. use that as an external trigger to f fuel joy and happiness into that. Yes. Yes. So I brought a few guests that have been providing me some triggers of joy. Um, they don't have names yet, but this is, um, I think it's called an elephant ear, apparently. I bought a bunch of baby plants, and it's going to be a real test on whether or not I can <laughs> keep indoor plants alive. <laughs> but I like him a lot because he, he has cool, colorful leaves. But it's not coming across very well with the light. But anyway, maybe this one will come across better. Oh, no, it's green. You can't see it at all. It's gone. Okay. Oh, that was a bad idea. Nope, that one's gone too. Oh, my goodness. Well, anyway, like I said earlier, I've gotten some houseplants. Um, really following the, the young white female demographic and bought a bunch of houseplants. Um, but when, when I'm not summer anymore and I'm not outside all the time I'll be very happy and joyful and to to have little houseplants all around and have that little growing thing that I'm taking care of and nurturing so like there's something there that needs me to pay attention to it and because yes. the the just the plant the nature that that whole aspect is something that brings me joy and I have to do something about it like every day or every other day however often they need water i'm not really sure yet we'll find out um <laughs> that is like a mandatory thing that to like trigger a little bit a little piece of joy in me to like filter that in and grow that into more of my like overall attitude that is lovely you know i don't uh, did we at any time share the fact that i had a peace plant i think we did um I that, think that so. was is it that outside? was. I was fascinated by when the when the plant came up. The imprint of the seed pod was on the leaf itself, and that was so special. And I wow, loved that. Awesome. Um, and what really that funny little plant that I got bore seven different um, uh, peace lilies. Seven wow. of them came out of it. I've never seen seven come out before. And I, every one that, that came out and then gradually unfurled itself and then thrust itself up, it was, oh, I mean, I, I, I agree with that completely. Now, I am getting interested, and that, that I'm going to need jerk on that, okay, because that's yeah. what we do. Um, I am in the business of trying to get some people together in a Zoom, um, a small group of people who are able to find the kind of relationship that we have built up with each other. This linkage together, I want eight people 
who aren't necessarily friends now to be able to join together and be real. You know, there's a, there's a statement which is humility is being known for who you are. So if you think about that, then pride is wanting to be known for who you're not. And there's an awful lot of people who are on, on the screen who are not exactly who they are. They're sort of posturing to be somebody that they hope will be liked by other people. Mm -hmm. But what I want to do is to get eight people together who will just hang out with each other and just be, just be who they are and see whether we can come together and enjoy one another, even love one another, as a result of that experience. Just eight completely separate people of about the same age group. I'm, I, I'm not going to do this more than just with you. Um, and I'm really hopeful for that because it seems to me that we're sort of separated at the moment. We're six feet apart and we can't hug and we can't shake hands. Um, so we can look into this, this, this screen and care about each other. I have a friend who kisses the screen every night when he <laughs> says goodnight to his wife, who's mm. in a um, memory care situation. Mm. And they've always prayed together and they've always kissed each other after they finished praying. So they still do that now, even though they're miles apart. And she has lost her awareness to the degree that it's just normal. She's praying with him and she's kissing him goodnight and she's very happy. Now, if that kind of emotion can communicate through a piece of glass, then <laughs> I just turned off the light on one side of me, forgive me, I'm sorry. Then please, I think that it's possible for people to join together in a Zoom group and learn to love one another. And so that's, you're getting your house plants, I'm getting people together for the same, for the same reason. I'd like to see them grow too, yeah. Yeah, and actually one of my plants was, Okay, I'm going to try this one more time. It's probably not going to show up. Okay, I think you can see the invisible leaves in front of my face. All right. <laughs> yes, this one. I can see you right through the plant. It's so I don't funny. Know what, there's a metaphor in that somewhere. I don't know what it is, but it's wonderful. <laughs> so a couple of my plants were given to me by one of my friends. And so in taking care of that, I'm like, not only is she spreading joy to me through that, makes me remember her in that and keeps that connection going so good i love that idea there's another one. Oh, see i need to stop doing this i just i get so excited about it every time and they're all in <laughs> and, and and we're able to enter into imagination what you can see just look at the That's... ones behind me that's what it looks like over there <laughs> okay. i'm not that good at raising plants yet <laughs> <laughs> but but what made me think of this to begin with was um, through like a couple random YouTube videos I ended up watching, there were two different separate times where someone was answering the question, what is the meaning of life? And in part of their answer, kind of like the core of their answer was to be happy. And I was thinking of what makes me happy and what makes me happy is to make other people happy. And so having a mission of like spreading joy, not only fits in what I want to do, but is also fits in sort of that little answer of yes, what is the meaning of life? And there's a whole lot more to it, of course, <laughs> but that's <laughs> my, my current little thought right now is, is for me, Lovely. Um, what makes me happy in order to be able to, to have enough joy to spread it around. Good, so in other words, you're going to look at, at joy in a real sense. You're looking at plants, associating them with friends and taking joy in nurturing that plant as though you were nurturing a friend and using it like a trampoline upon which you can bounce into the world around you. Yeah. Um, with, yes, like <laughs> that uplifting examples of bouncing. I love that. Um, 
I love that. And and look at the positive and make a point of that positive with people that you meet. I, it's good. Yeah, t- trying to, t- to find little, um, almost in a way like houseplants for me are representative of a thing that I'm constantly required to pay attention to and therefore brings me joy, which helps me spread joy to other people. Like the end goal is yes. spreading joy to other people. What I'm trying to find are things that like slap me in the face and remind me to like stop worrying about everything and like don't don't knock everything out of your head, of course, and just like be a, be an airheaded happy person. But like <laughs> to to have enough joy to to have positive interactions with all the people around me. Lovely. And I, I personally love the idea that as, as, um, as faith is tending this plant for the very purpose of seeing it grow and flourish, so that she is also tending her friendships and seeing them grow and flourish. And I just love that. It means nothing about the political season that we're in at all, because these plants will grow and flourish all the way through that political season without noticing it. The only way that they would notice it if we stopped paying attention to the plant and paid more attention to politics. And uh, I I think this is so amazing. I love the idea of it um, so much. (laughs) I'm going to practice it all week. Take my positive. For example, this is a new book out, which I think you will like, Faith. It, what is interesting about this book um, is that it is climate change, but it's climate change by somebody who really knows what they're saying and is saying that it is possible that we can come out of this without being destroyed. And he actually has written a bit a book about what is possible without too much of the excessive expenditures and whole reworking of life that we keep on saying. This is possible. This is possible. And so I think it's a, it's a real wonderful piece of good news to be able to pass on to each other. So there you go. <laughs> See what you think. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So this week we will be searching for um words to say synthesize this <laughs> <laughs> now i've got a suggestion okay why um viewers at home our dear friends how about leaving us a comment tell us what we should be wondering this week. <laughs> you put it into your words what this joyful attitude and how we can springboard off that in, yes, into, into a world that's hurting at the moment and bring some relief. That would we'd love to do. Right. Little, little pieces around us that can feed our joy in order for us to spread that to other people. Um, for me, I know that I, I am, am very forgetful and not very good at routine. So, so it's helpful for me to have things that kind of need my attention, like are required for me to do. Um, cause I'm not a very scheduled person, but maybe for other people, that's just like, I like bubble baths. They make me happy. And so I'll take a bubble bath and now I can be a happier person or something like that. <laughs> Searching for the things that fuel your joy in order to spread that out to other people. Good. So that's what we will be thinking about this week. Uh, this has been Tea at Three. I am Faye Schmidt. This is Graham Care, and we'll see you next week. Oh, and don't forget to like if you liked the video and subscribe if you're not already and share with your friends. And please, please, please comment down below. We honestly, truly, truly love having other people's input in this whole process. So if yes. you comment down below, we'll be sure to read that and keep that in mind. Yeah, and please, you know, it's not the face and I haven't got something to be concerned about, but it would be marvelous to find out what you think that we just said. That would be very <laughs> helpful to us. <laughs> Which would always be the case every week, by the way. We need your help. 
Yeah, we're always thinking of what we're about to say and, and can't always hear what the other person's saying. So I'd love to hear back from more people who are hearing both sides fully. <laughs> All right, see you next time.